My name is Zoe Nuku. Uh, I'm from the Waikato here, though I sort of grown up around here. Um, just on the farm here most of the time, but I've done a lot of traveling. It's great, great growing up around here and, and, and being having access to my, my studio, my workshop, uh, just up the back of the farm. So, you know, it's just only a couple hundred meter walk and I'm, or, or try, not drive, I'm lazy. Um, and just drive up the back here, boom, I'm in my office. Uh, it's just me, me, the cows, the wind and the rain. Yeah, then it's, it's exciting, it's exciting. I discovered art as a young, young kid. Went through some emotional stuff as a kid. You know what I thought was emotional, you know, you know mum and dad splitting and things like that. And and what happened was I kind of retreated into art as as my solace, my, my safe place. And and it, I loved it. I loved it. It was freedom. You know, I just pick up a pen and paper. I sit there for hours, just drawing and drawing. And it wasn't till in sort of my, my mid-teens I was introduced to sculpting um, through a man named Roger Bell. And he took me into the bush and basically we sourced the punga for his garden. He goes, oh mate, I think you can do this. Come with me, we're going to go into the bush and, and do stuff. So, um, And then we got a punga, brought it out, gave me this little Japanese gardening tool and he goes, okay. And I, was like, I just ripped it to bits. And I tried to carve a nice weave or a plait, and it looked like three big eels fighting over a bit of bait. <laughs> Just it was all messed up, but it was so cool. I was I was so impressed with my own self that that was my first ever sculpted piece. And I thought halfway through the process, I was like, if that is my first one, what's my hundredth one going to look like? Basically my whole process was rotates around the chainsaw. And basically it's it blocks out all my pieces really quick. Um, it also allows me to sort of uh, make big holes and things. I like cutting big holes and stuff. So um, chainsaw is ideal. Uh, that's my number one go-to. And then after the chainsaw, basically I'll go straight in with a grinder. Um, just the standard sort of four and a half inch grinder. It's a five inch bits on it. Um, but heavy grip and smooth everything out and come up with something that's that sort of resembles artwork, so to speak. Sometimes I go into the chisel stuff and the, that's more the traditional side that I'm still learning. Um, so I, I've only just go in there a little bit now and again. Um, but yeah, use the basics of, of the simplicities of, of the culture and, and the designs and things and just really just let them grow. So my tattoo journey started uh, 10 years ago. In, in 2010, I went to Hawaii and the guy tattooed my hand um, by hand. He did hand poke. And I, I was just, I'd been looking for a, a process that was so simple for so long, halfway through that, as he's going through it, I'm like, I just looked him in the eye and said, mate, I'm going home, I'm going to do that to my brothers. I came back here, brought up all the all the kit I can find and and what I needed to, that I knew to do this hand poking process. And basically I just started hand poking everybody. And then I picked up a gun just 18 months ago. So what I do here is just a quick cut of here, just to, just to bring us um, all on the same level, I suppose. Eliminate any sort of negative juju, not that there is any, but just uh, just really to just perk up that awesomeness and, and help you through the process. When I look into sort of tr tattooing things, a lot of people like to come with their own ideas, their own designs, and so that's more. What makes changes the process is that the tattoos is, is more, it's a personal thing. Rather than a sculpture where everyone can reinterpret it however they think. Uh, for tattoos is, is being able to apply that to that person, for that person, how that person would like. Kia 
Kia ora, um, ko Pete Jones, Toko Ingra. I'm the principal at Manarewa High School. It took quite quite a while, you know, it's quite a long process. Um, Uenuku worked from within the school. We actually converted our garages for the minibuses into a, a workshop. Um, it was a beautiful process because everyone involved in the school was able to um, see it happening um, all the way along the journey and he was amazing with our rangatahi, with our particularly with our Māori whānau students who were able to go in and not just watch him work, but also at times be part of it as well. We've had nothing but positive feedback. It sort of tested me as an artist, really. Pushed my art to more into the traditional realm where I was a sort of, I was avoiding for so many years. And basically I was given uh, sort of free reign to, to sort of be able to include the, the school's mottos and things like that. Up the top there, we, it starts up the top with tickle tickle up the top is uh, tafaki. Tafaki for us here in the Waikato and, and around um, Tamaki Makaurau is the seeker of knowledge. By no means it was just uh, Nooks did all this, no, no, no. Uh, I, I was just a, a, a sort of part of that waka along with everyone else. I was raised in sort of a, a Māori uh, world. Yeah, everything was Māori from day dot. It's become a backbone to everything for me. Um, and def definitely everything I do has some sort of uh, reflection of, of Māori-ism. I'm trying to sort of put that back into my work. The simplest of teachings from our culture in order to sort of uh, personify those things into um, society itself so that people can feel like they are part of that as well because that's the beauty of Māoriness and Māori people is that you can come be Islamic or whatever, doesn't matter you can be Joe from Timbuktu and come down here and we'll feed you up mate and <laughs> send you home a bit more pudgy, you know and with a whole lot of love, yeah, and aroha I can die a happy man, knowing that, knowing that I did it, gave everything for every piece I did. Yeah, even if I, it wasn't that good or it wasn't quite the top tattoo at the time, you know, I gave it everything I had, everything. <laughs>